Well, I just completed a tour of Lucy's Pet Manufacturing Plant right here in Southern California, broadcasting from their Pet Food Safety Lab. You're going to hear my audio. I'm going to tell you why I recommend Lucy Pet Food and why this video tour that I just did will help you make the right decision about feeding your own pets. So anyway, what happens, uh, the first thing here at the manufacturing plant is the ingredients come in, the dry ingredients. So this door right here is where all the dry ingredients come in. It could be, uh, uh, you know, potato protein, as you see here. It could be uh, sweet potatoes, all kinds of stuff. Comes in here first. Uh, samples are taken. So it goes over to the lab to make so sure. So the samples are taken to make sure that everything comes in right from, right yes. from the get-go. Yes. It's checked. Yeah, I mean, we, we use the greatest suppliers that we know that have proven themselves for many years. But even though that the suppliers that we know aren't very good and we don't use them, you still got to check everything because something can happen and you just can't allow that. No, so you check everything. No, that's, a, that, that's fantastic. It just... You know, I mean, there's, there's uh, you know, different kinds of... Uh, there's pea flour and all kinds of things. Uh, vitamin, mineral, premix, which we bring in. And... Uh, so as you can see, we got a lot of... Uh, yeah, I, I don't think the average, the average consumer out there has any idea of really what goes into the manufacturing of their pet food, especially a place like, you know, we're at Lucy's Manufacturing Plant. It amazes me um, how many things go in and how, how careful you guys are about checking every little thing. Yeah, you just have to. It's, uh, uh, like, but that's a, a mix room where they combine uh, all, a lot of the ingredients together. So the ingredients we just walked by, those will be combined in there. They'll be mixed together because you may need, you may need, you know, 100 pounds of tomato pumice, 100 pounds of ground millet, or, you know, whatever, whatever the formula calls for. They they mix that in there, and that that's the dry room. That's where they put all the dry. The dry room. I like dry, that. The dry room. That's where all the dry ingredients get together. You know, the the wet meat and everything. We'll we'll get to that. We're, we're building. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> the, the whole concept to me is that. Lucy Pet Food is here. It's not coming from there. It's here. No. Nope. It's, it's uh, homegrown and right here. And uh, we're going to go into the uh, uh, extruder room. I'll show you about that. And you know, the cleanliness in this place is absolutely incredible. I mean, you it's know, cleaner than my house, Joey. You know, we're not running today because we ran all week and we're cleaning on Saturday and Sunday. And even when we're running, there's no odor, there's no, it's just great. This is all the, the packaging machine. This whole line is all for our big bags. And then it gets uh, put on a pallet and, and wrapped and it's all automated. But what's really interesting, so this is the extruder room. This is the machine that makes kibble. See all this stuff? This is an extruder. And, uh, the uh, dry ingredients get brought over here. The uh, fresh meat and everything, that gets pumped over to here. And it all gets blended together in this extruder. And what's interesting about this machine is everybody and their mother and their brother and their sister want into the pet food industry. Why? Because it's over a $30 billion industry. But they don't have a clue of what they're saying. It, it fries me <laughs> when, when people come out and, and they're just being hold something and they say it and they don't there's no truth it's to the it. gospel to them they believe it yes and it amazes me that they believe it and it, it is so easy to disprove and yet they'll swear by it oh, they people not kibble and they always say oh kibble is it's heated to high temperature there's no nutrients okay see this machine that's the extruder that makes the, it into kibble it's 210 degrees for two minutes 210 degrees. Like, I put a turkey in the oven at Thanksgiving at 350 <laughs> for seven hours. Do you think there's no nutrients left in my turkey? Of course there so are. So that's all a fallacy. It's all BS. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's re it really fries me that people get away with saying things like that. That's why I'm here, because you tell me exactly what's going on. And if you go to and listen to other people in the pet food industry, what happens, Joey, is they'll tell you this on Monday and you speak to them on Thursday, it's an entirely different story. Yeah. The continuity, the consistency, again, of the food I feed my guys and I feed Lucy Pet Food is really critical to me. I'm really glad that, you know, everyone sees extruder, they have this, this image of a flame shooting out and 7,000 degrees and, and, and 
200 degrees. 210. 210. Um, yeah. I mean, um, so it's, it's, it's crazy what they say about it. Now, there are uh, companies that make bad kibble, right? I mean, because the, the plant's no good, the ingredients are no good. It starts at the top. If, if the people uh, at the top don't have the passion and the love of animals and care, well, then it, it, it trickles down. Get it out and sell it. Yeah. That's their product. Get it out and sell it. Yeah. And actually, there's something over here I'll, I'll show you. Because uh, we have signs all around the plant, and it's, it's all to remind the workers of what we're doing here. See that sign up there? It has a picture of a dog and a cat. It says, their life depends on you. That is, you'll see signs like that all around the plant because that's extremely important. Because it only takes one guy to mess something up. So, If I were to describe this place in one word, after speaking to you and other people, it's warm. And I don't mean physically warm. Everyone here is, is amazingly passionate about what they do. And that shows up in the product, because if you don't have the passion, the product's not going to be the quality that you would want it to be. Absolutely. I mean, uh, but see, that comes down from the top. That comes down from me and my partners. No, they, they, you drive you me know. crazy with your passion, Joey. It, uh, uh, well, I love my dogs, you know. I mean, I got back into it because I didn't know what to feed my dogs anymore. Just the name of the product. Where did Lucy Pet Food come from? Yeah. Well, Lucy is my there you go. 16 going on 17 year old there you go talk Chihuahua. about passion so so that's the extruder room and uh and you're seeing the packaging lines these are all the big big uh big bag packaging. so lines. after it's extruded is it pretty much ready to be packaged at that point no what happens it gets it gets cooked so it's ready to go and then it comes over here and uh for a short time and it, it just that, that's a dryer because water is the enemy you can't have too much moisture you need to be below 10% moisture. And so this takes out some of that moisture. So once it's extruded, it goes into the, into the dryer. Product gets dried, and then, then it gets pumped over to the other side of the plant, which we're getting there. I don't think the average person has any idea of what, go, well, what should go into their pet food. It doesn't always, but what should. There's another one. See, there's another sign which shows dogs and cats, and their future depends on you. It keeps that passion, that motivation up there. Yep. I mean, we have to work as a team here. And, and I've had conversations with all the workers that, you know, we want to make the best food in the business. It takes all of us. If you see somebody that's not doing something correctly, you, you gotta tell a supervisor. Yeah. Remember, because it affects not only dogs and cats, but it affects all of us, you know? Because you can't have one guy not. As, as you say, it's, it's, it's a, a team effort. It's a team effort. So that's what we stress here. And uh, we actually started a campaign, uh, which you can put, drop a name in a box. If you see somebody doing something really good work, write, a, write it on this piece of paper and let us know what you saw because they'll get rewarded. You know, they'll get a gift card for something. And just the fact that you're open to, to the people that work here, letting you know what may be able to do to improve things even. Yes. Always, always want to improve. Over here, that's the small packaging line. And, uh, uh, you know, like two pound bags, four pound bags. Uh, we do that here. We actually just got this machine right here. Everything was always done semi manually, right? We just bought that machine because that ups the output. Because so many people are coming to us, uh, you know, for products so, uh, in small bags. So that, we're happy that we got that machine. That's pretty cool. This over here is a sample machine. So, you know, the little two ounce, four ounce bags of samples, you make that here. So that's cool. So what happens when the product's done in the dryer, it comes over here. There's uh, about 250,000 pounds of bin space right here that holds it. Unbelievable. And this is another, this is the coating section. So we can put on, depending on what the formula calls for, we can put on, you know, duck fat, canola oil, whatever the formula calls for. It gets coated here and goes into this, machine, another dryer, which, which uh, uh, dries that together. You can put in the duck fat on the outside. That all happens right in here. And, and then the, it gets back into the bins, and then, it, and then it's all computerized, and the operator can send whatever is in bin number one over to the bagging line, and then it gets bagged. 
I, I'm, I'm s shocked at the amount of steps oh, that wow. you guys take to make sure the quality and of here, the food. Here's a very interesting section. And actually, this sign here, before we bought the plant, the plant was, was level three certified, which is the highest level you can get from SQF, an independent auditing firm. You know, there's other pet food companies. I uh, actually just saw one last year. We've been certified by SQF. Well, that's, that's nice, but they're not a level three. There's different levels. So, so level three is way up there. Level three is, uh, we got 98%, you know, when they come through. Uh, so it, it's amazing. And, and what happens here, this is different times. You see, like 12 a.m., like when we're, we're down, we come back up at you know, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., every hour. There's, huh. there's, there's a sample of the product for every hour, which means the lab can get it, check it out, make sure what's going on, make sure it's meeting within spec. Now, is that something that you guys do that most people don't? Yeah, I don't know if they do that as uh, meticulous as uh, Clint and Steve. By the hour, that's amazing to by me. By the hour. So you can isolate, you know what's going on. Over here, you know, more store, storage area for ingredients. Uh, we're in the process of just finishing a, a new treat line. We're coming out with a, uh, some really amazing products with a veterinarian who developed uh, uh, these nutraceuticals. So that's coming out. This is all the new equipment. We just got the electric put in on it. So we're not operating it yet in this area. And this that, does, this will do what? That's gonna make all these uh, new nutraceutical chews. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's also gonna make uh, uh, a, a roll, you know, our rolls, when we dry out the rolls, uh, and they become biscuits. And so that machine dries out the rolls, takes the moisture out. People, I gotta tell you, people that, that my, my people that live in RVs, my listeners love those rolls. Yeah. They love those rolls. Yeah, we actually, uh, uh, a couple more weeks, we have a, uh, a new roll coming out, which uh, it's called uh, Mom's Meatloaf. <laughs> and it actually will replace canned food. Huh. And, and what's cool about it is, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to tell everybody too much yet, but it's <laughs> a very cool product, very palatable, and uh, excited about it to come out. So the rolls are made in here, and so we bring in the, the meat, and it gets ground, and then mixed in that mixer right there, and they get, then it gets put into uh, the VMAG right here. This is a sausage stuffer. <laughs> so it gets put in here, and then it goes into the uh, tipper tie machine, and this machine right here, uh, the meat gets pushed into the casing, right, the outer wrapper, and then uh, puts the clip on and a loop, and then we cook it. So here's one. See, this machine makes the four pound roll. And see what it comes out to be. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, dogs go crazy for this. Oh, they love it. They love the, it. I'm the, telling you. The dog show <laughs> people are so happy it's back because uh, in the day when I had my other company, every dog show handler in the business was using this. So. I, they use it to bait their dogs at the yes. show rings. It will get your dog's attention in the ring. Gets my dog's attention. Not in the ring, but gets their attention yeah. anyway. So, anyway, all right, we'll so go. Many, so many options, and, and, and again, Joey, the most important thing from my perspective is that, and, and I, don't, I don't need to blow your horn, but the bottom line is, you're walking around this plant with me today, giving me the tour, showing me the amazing passion that goes into the manufacturing, and yet, you know I've been doing this for, for well over 40 years, and the bottom line is, you're the first CEO that has ever taken the time and had the, the, the wherewithal to say, hey, you know, let me really show, what to, let me let you know what we're really all about. I don't need the PR, I don't need the marketing, I need this, I need to see, hear, smell, take everything that's going on, and the fact that you're giving me that opportunity to like, is amazing. I'll show you what this is. This room in here, this is, uh, it's all torn apart. Because uh, when the, we, we have our audit on Monday, they look at all the equipment and everything. So this is actually where frozen meat comes in and uh, uh, it gets uh, all ground up and mixed in here. And then it gets shipped over 
uh, pumped over to the extruder on the other side of the plant. Wow. So all the meat is here. You know, the roll room is a separate room. Like we bring our frozen meat into the roll room because we have our own grinder and mixer in there. So this is, this is separate only for kibble. And then, you know, what's coming up next is what makes us different than any other pet food plant. And this is uh, our million dollar pet food safety lab. This is impressive. When we bought the plant, uh, you know, going on three years ago, uh, it was a small little lab here and they sent everything out. And we came in and said, okay, no, we want to make this big. And uh, uh, we did, we knocked out walls, we knocked out the, a mezzanine up on top to make the ceilings high. And then uh, we got Steve Lanetta to head the lab. And uh, I called Steve when we first got the place and he came over because I asked him, would you like to get back in the pet food industry? And he goes, Joey, I, listen, I definitely want to work with you, but man, how can we do anything in this lab? I said, Steve, we're going to knock out the walls, we're going to knock the ceilings, and we'll get you any equipment you want. So what did he do? After we knocked out all the walls and ceilings and built everything, he went out and bought a $166,000 <laughs> liquid chromatography. I got a great deal on it, $166,000 LCMS. That's machine there that could do melamine sciuric acid vitamin d and all kinds of things and i said for 166 thousand you think it would make margaritas <laughs> but it can't do that uh, but it can test for so why did you decide to have your own laboratory for testing versus other companies out there that may send their product out to a an independent laboratory i can probably answer my own question but i'm going to ask you any why the importance of your own lab well, the... And not just any lab. We're talking, I'm looking around, million dollar lab here. I could move into this place, Joey. I'm a big believer in testing. When I had my other pet food company, I was the first person in the pet food industry to build a lab and actually uh, go on a line. I, I had people go online, type in your date code, and you could see the test results for your product. I was the first person in the industry to do that. I thought that... Uh, Everybody would copy me, but here we are, 10, 11 years later, nobody copied me. <laughs> so, because uh, it's really a, a, a pain to do, but it made me sleep good at night. And uh, that's what's important. So when I bought this plant, I knew I was gonna do the exact same thing I did previously, was build a state-of-the-art lab and test like nobody tests, because I know what's going on in the industry. I mean, unfortunately, the industry is a fraudulent industry, and you've got guys in there who, who really shouldn't be in the industry. It, uh, it's shameful what they do. It's all about the money. It should not be about the money. It should be about the health of the animal first. And so that's why we test. In the end of the industry that I'm in, the majority of people that, that contact me are not the CEOs like you. It's not the scientists like Steve. It's not people like Dave. It's strictly marketing and advertising executives who have no comprehension of the pet food industry. And yet these are the people that get the information out to the general public. Right. So the general public then calls someone like me on the air and say, well, I heard so-and-so said this and so-and-so said this. And they have no idea where to go. That's why I was so excited to do the show we're going to do today. Because now the consumer is going to hear the truth. Yeah, it's, uh, they'd be shocked. It, it's just, uh, and I, coming back into the industry, I didn't plan to come back into the pet food industry. I mean, when I sold my other company, you know, it was people would said to me, well, you'll never have to work again, and your kids will never have to work. Well, they didn't understand I'm a type A personality, so I have to no, work. No, Joe, you're type A. <laughs> so I have to work. But, you know, I started my foundation right after. I, I should have took some time off. We sold the company, in, my pr first pet food company in July, and by October, I was out doing free spay and neuter in Los Angeles with a, with a surgical staff. And, we, and I'm very, very proud of that. We've done almost 30,000 free amazing. spay and neuters. And, uh, but I came back into the pet industry because I didn't know what to feed my dogs because I know what's going on and it's only gotten worse and it's uh, unbelievable what's happening. Well, again, it, the amazing thing is that, that the average consumer, again, is being pitched not by people in the know but by marketing. I mean, you could sp if you could spend one day on the phone with me and see the, the, the phone calls I get, the emails I get from people 
And if I could ask them one question, well, let me ask you, what's in the pet food that you want me to pitch? They can't answer it because they're strictly marketing or ad right. people. They have no, I'm talking about major companies as well. And again, the important factor here is that it's not just how good Lucy Pet Food is, but I know you, type A, you're never satisfied. You're always going to do things to improve it, improve it, improve it, improve it, improve it. And that's important to the consumer. Well, what was very cool, when I, I, I came back in. I wasn't coming back into pet food. Why? I've been there, done that, very <laughs> successful. I'm the guy that pioneered duck and potato, sweet potato and venison, green pea and duck. I started all that stuff and pioneered it. So I've been there, done that. Why did I come back? You know, I, I mean, I started my foundation. Very proud of my foundation. But I didn't know what to feed all my dogs. And I know what's going on. And it quite honestly ticked me off. Yeah. So I came back for a couple of reasons. One, to feed my dogs, my, something I believed in. And two, I came back to change the industry. And, and you're doing it. I mean, the I'm industry is definitely, well, today's a great start. Today's, today's I'm just, a start. I'm, I just want people to understand that what they see on TV, what they hear on radio, except for my show, of course, um, <laughs> is not necessarily factual it's not necessarily true and what really pisses me off is it can be really detrimental to their dogs and their cats oh yeah and, and and when I see some of the some of the recalls that have been done I gave you a list when I came in there might have been 80 90 recalls in the last year or so when I see the I, I sent you the, just this morning I think I sent yeah. you a recall on doggy toothpaste yeah what's going on why aren't there more people like you in the industry who's concerned I know everyone wants to make a buck but are more concerned about the, the quality of the ingredients, the, the, the health of people's pets. It's just not out there anymore. The, uh, well, quality of ingredients. So years ago, because I'm the guy that pioneered duck and potato, right? So I want to see how potatoes are being made. And uh, so I go to the potato plant. So, uh, you know, I'm like we are here, white coat, hair net, all the stuff. And I'm, I'm standing in front of this huge, big machine. And for potatoes, potatoes are 90% water. So you got to get the water out. So this machine is, the machine is doing that. And, uh, but these potato flakes are on the floor. So a guy's got a squeegee, and he squeegees them into a big pile, and he puts them into a bin. And there's a name on the bin, which I'll tell you later. And, <laughs> but I knew what it was. So I said to him, hey, what's going on with, with that stuff? And he goes, oh, that's for pet food. I said, wait a minute, that's for pet food? How can it be for pet food? I saw it on the ground, it's contaminated. Two, I said there was a, a, a sliver of wood from a pallet on the ground and it was in with the potatoes flakes on the floor how can that be for, for pet food and he says oh you don't have to worry about that the company we sell it to they sift it and clean it before it goes to the pet food plants now if you're if you're a pet food manufacturer you can buy that stuff you know maybe you buy that stuff for 28 cents a pound or you can go buy the real stuff that goes into human grade potato chips for you know 58 cents a pound what do you think people buy yeah you're right they, so I have no idea. It says potato on the label, but they're getting peels. Well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> so that's We're going to talk about that later, but yeah. it's, it's, it's true. When I heard that story that it says potato on the label, it would be like me going to the store and buying an apple and getting nothing but the peels. Right. And, and yet people don't have any idea that just because it says potato, they're not getting potato. No. Well, that's why we had to buy our own plant, because uh, all the, the pet food plants are getting bought up by the venture capital groups. Those plants that I used to use in my first company... They, don't, they now make product that's not good, and so we had to buy our own plant. But, you know, years ago, I'm the guy that pioneered duck and potato, right? And we're buying 125 million pounds of potato a year are going into that one skew, right? And all of a sudden, I, the manufacturer is sending me product what's well, really dark. I go, what's going on? The product's dark. Oh, gee, I don't know, don't know. Well, come to find out, because I have friends, and we investigate it. They changed the supplier, and the supplier was buying potatoes, but they were getting uh, a lot of peels. Like, you know when you buy uh, French fries at the grocery store in the bag? Well, where do you think the peels are? They peel them, and you're not getting peels in that bag. Well, company Someone's was, buying them. Somebody's buying them, and, 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 a, and a potato supplier who wasn't really, in my opinion, reputable started mixing you know 80 percent peels with 20 percent of the meat nice. of the potato and that's why my product got dark and you know i started screaming and that's another reason why when the opportunity came to buy this plant 
we had to buy the plan. Uh, when it comes to someone like yourself who has the passion, a little bit of a control freak, but that's good. That's what you need. But that's what you have to be. Yeah. That's what you have to be. It's like when I do the radio show, I'll produce. Give me a, a quick example. When I was doing the Today Show, the producer would go, hey, Warren, this is how I want you to do it because I think this will work. In my head, I've been doing this for a few years. I know what's going to work. Yeah. So I'll go out and I'll do it exactly the way I want to do it. At the end of the segment, he'll say to me, I told you my way would work, Warren. I didn't do anything he suggested, but I told <laughs> you my way would work. And it's the same thing with the, with the industry. Again, you're going to hear from listeners, or I'll hear from listeners, if not today, saying, um, how do I know? Well, this is how you know. Right. This is how you know. There's someone like you behind it. I'm going to talk to Steve. I'll talk to Dave. And if people will find out that when they go and purchase pet food for their dog or their cat, that it's more than the bag, it's more than the ingredients. And I'm going to talk to Steve about this. I already mentioned to him that just because two bags may have exactly the same ingredients doesn't mean that those, the quality of those ingredients are exactly the same. No. And that's something people don't understand. They see potato, it's potato. They don't realize one is peels, one's the real potato. It just says potato. It's, uh, it's why we don't buy ingredients from people that aren't reputable or that we have a long history with. You so, know, I, so I know. So once again, I'm leaving here with a big bag of Lucy pet food from my Molly and my Willie. <laughs> my two, my, they love it. They, they've been on it since day one. Since the day I rescued from the high kill shelter, my guys, Molly and Willie, which are now pretty famous, uh, uh, have been on Lucy pet food. Well, you know what's really cool, too, is uh, like the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, they've, they've switched all the police canines to us. You know, the bomb dogs, the drug dogs. Uh, we just got the LAPD airport dogs. You know, the California State Fish and Game put all their dogs on our stuff. I mean, th the products work. I, not, and, and, and I'm glad it does. You know, and, and we're gonna, I'm going to introduce you to some of the people at NYPD because, you know, right after Ground Zero, I was at, uh, at the World Trade Center with NYPD Kane, and they called me in because of my expertise, which is, you know, incendiary devices and drugs. I always yeah. joke. I knew where the drugs were and I knew where the bombs were, so I was pretty, <laughs> I was pretty safe. Um, but it's amazing, they were feeding their dogs a product that was okay, but like you say, the one of the formulas you have specifically made for those tactical dogs, right. who would think about that? Who would even think about that? Yet you did, it has more quality ingredients specifically because these dogs are hard working. Yeah, it, and I tell you, I do like uh, being home and just about any time there's a police canine on TV here in L.A., I go, hey, they're <laughs> using our food. They're using your food. I like there, that. there you go. Unbelievable. Yeah.